Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello guys, back with me, Dr. Ulka here So today for lecture level 7 We're gonna learn about uh, VR input devices Okay, so let's begin What is VR input devices? Okay, so it is, I mean, it can be physical device. Okay, basically, uh, all of them are physical device. And it used to convey the information uh, to the virtual reality application. And also support interaction in virtual environment. So, uh, the usage of input devices in VR is to convey information to VR application and also support interaction in the virtual environment. Mm, since we use a uh, desktop a lot, so we can tell that the input devices for desktop are mouse, okay, keyboard. So all these two are mainly for selecting, dragging and dropping, scrolling and also the keyboard is also for text entry. What about VR? Hmm. What is the input devices for VR? So there are uh, two types of VR input devices. The first is uh, hand input VR devices. Okay. Device that deal with hand and also device that doesn't deal with hand. So non-hand input VR devices. So for the first, we're going to talk about the hand input VR devices. Basically, it uh, used in hand for giving input in VR. So there are many types of these uh, VR input devices. Hand input. Yes, the first is world grounded input devices. As you can see here, uh, this girl is uh, wearing bulky VR HMD. And also uh, there are some functions in the machine. And if we are, uh, I would say, we are spot here. So the world grounded input devices, as you can see, it's grounded. So it fix in the real world, guys. Okay, uh, it can only fix in the VR device. It cannot be moved. Okay, it's fixed there. You cannot do anything with the movement. So therefore, it constrains user's movement. It's ideal for VR metaphor, like a uh, metaphor of the, uh, in this case, is Disney Aladdin's magic carpet in the Disney's Quest. And also Disney's Quest write the comics. So it's good for metaphoring some, um, I mean, situation that a uh, human cannot see. Back in... 2012, 2013, okay, early 2000, okay, so it's used in location-based entertainment. So therefore, it's normally a uh, place in theme park or Disney Quest, the earliest uh, Disney theme park in 1990s until 2014. Okay. All right, so in the World grounded input devices. It used joystick to give input. For example, you wanna move to left, you wanna move to right. It used joystick as the input devices. So you can see it uh, in the next picture, which is Aladdin's magic carpet, right? This was in back in 2000. Okay where it has some uh, installation of VR Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride. So this is the installation. This is the 
entrance you can see that's genie and this is the name and all of these are the um, TV and the device and this is what people will put on their head the HMD and this is how they will control the movement using the joystick they will sit here and they will move the um, movement based on the joystick here so we'll watch the video back in the days of Disney's Aladdin Magic Carpet right? alright I'm gonna play um okay so this is a clock of we visitor. just completed magic carpet magic carpet ni story sari ka batave chhe okay i'm telling you the story and you need to you need to put those uh, uh, you need to put on your head and from that you see in the laser you see the Aladdin and uh, you keep going on the magic carpet you turn right or left that's it you just turn right or left on move forward and then at the end you have to rescue the genie you just keep going and automatically you rescue the genie it was not so good yep so that's about the uh Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride back in 2000 okay you can see that the HMD is still so big and the device is so constrained you cannot move a lot but back in the days it was one of the sophisticated technologies in the world so let's go to the next example which is uh, beside uh, Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride, the Disney Quest also have ride comics. So you can see here all these people also. It's similar, pretty similar with the Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride, the VR installation device. Uh, it's just the content inside it will it is different. So the content is about you um, play along with the hero superheroes so let's just so this is the example i think this one is more uh i would say it has the joystick here all right and uh you can move uh like more free i mean the movement it's not so constrained like the Alan's magic carpet before you can see the chair is quite comfortable Okay, and but you still have to use the bulky HMD. So how is the experience? Let's play the video. Right, coming. It is the inside. the right comics the second example of world grounded input devices so let's go to the next okay so beside world grounded input devices the second example is track handheld controllers yes so 
track and hot controllers is like oculus rift s controller okay it can be a hand controller basically it's 6 duf vr hand controller okay not google cardboard because google cardboard is 3 duf so it combines a button or joystick input plus tracking it provides proprioceptive passive haptic touch cues also direct mapping to real hand motion and therefore it enhances VR presence so this is one of the best options for VR this is oculus rift s and normally it has two controllers in left and right so we'll see what is the controller about uh, this is scc5 controller basically it uh, it is pretty similar with the oculus controllers so this is the left side and this is the right side so the Ocul the hand controller has usb port also sensors course to track the hand and pogo pin here friction pad standard camera mount here and stabilizing pin braces and the next is power button here to on and off also this is LED indicator if it's on then means the LED is on there is a light but if it's off it, it will be light so for uh, SCC5 it used battery guys so it has to be charged I used SCC5 before and then now uh, in new time I use Oculus Rift S so Oculus Rift S has a uh, built-in battery uh, it's like A3 battery for your toy car so that is uh, Oculus Rift S battery but for SCC5 uh, it doesn't have any built-in battery so it has to be charged for you to use if it's uh, if the battery has been finished okay so yeah that is the track handheld controllers next is non-track so if previously was track this one is non-track so these devices is also held in hand but cannot track in virtual environment there are many kinds such as game controllers, joysticks, xbox controllers so mostly like uh, game controllers okay so this is the game controller and this is the joystick next is hand worn devices so uh, these are the devices that you wear in your hand fingers like this haptic glove or you have you wear in your arms like this this is a thermal gun thermoreal from the brand name takeaway it if i'm not mistaken it was korean brand so this device can can give hot and cold sensation while we are in virtual environment so it can give us the hot or cold or the middle one the normal one the medium one between hot and cold so it's really good to feel the heat or the cold with this device and this one is haptic device as you know it tracks your fingers so you can move your fingers in precise way when you are in virtual environment 
Next is hand gesture. So this one is using bare hands, guys. It means no device at all. Yes, the device is the uh, headset, but it doesn't have any haptic glove like uh, the previous one. So, so this one is bare hands, totally nothing empty in our hand. It's only our uh, VR headset. Okay, this is available for Oculus Quest 2. Okay, so you can just uh, use hand gesture to interact in the virtual environment. It's cool, right? So how is it? Let's just play the video to know about it. Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today is an awesome day as the Oculus Quest got another free update and this time it's the hand tracking update. Now when this was originally unveiled during Oculus Connect 6, Oculus stated that the free update would be coming next year. However today, they surprised everyone by releasing the update early, just like an early Christmas present to all those Quest owners out there. So in this video, I'll show you what you need to do to get the update, I'll show you how hand tracking works and what it looks like, and then I'll give you my conclusion at the end of the video. Timestamps are in the description down below as always. I hope you guys and girls enjoy this one, and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so first up, let me show you how to get the latest update and then how to enable the new hand tracking feature. Now your Oculus Quest will need to be running the very latest software, which at the time of this video is version 12 or higher. Now, this is one of those updates that gradually rolls out. So whether you get the update or not is a bit of potluck, to be honest. However, there is a few things you can do. The first thing to try is having your quest in sleep mode. To do this, turn your quest on and connect it to power and then place it into sleep mode by just pressing the power button on the side once, which will turn off the white LED at the front. Some people have found leaving the quest in sleep mode overnight, it downloaded the update itself and all they needed to do was reset the device in the morning. Another method is that you can manually try and push the update to your quest by turning it on, navigating through the menus and going to settings, see all, about, and then checking your version number there and seeing if there is an update available. As a last resort, and if you just can't wait any longer, a fellow content creator named Tycho Tech did an excellent step-by-step -step video guide on how to sideload the update manually. Now I've put a link to the video in the description down below. You do need to have enabled developer mode for this method to work and just proceed at your own risk. If you don't know what you're doing or you don't feel comfortable with this, please don't try it. Because if anything goes wrong and you have to factory reset your headset, you'll lose switch between hand tracking and controller mode at any time. So let's put the hand tracking to the test. Now right now the hand tracking only works with a few first party applications such as the Oculus web browser where you can now easily browse your favorite websites and channels on YouTube using your hands alone. To click on something all you need to do is touch your index finger and thumb together for a click and then just touch and hold and move your hand around to scroll. Feels very intuitive. Alongside the Oculus browser, you can also use hand tracking in the Oculus TV app, where you can use the gesture controls to pause, play, or scrub through a video. If you're looking for something really fun to experience in the Oculus TV app, I would highly recommend trying out the LEGO Batman 360 video. It's short, but it's absolutely hilarious and completely free. And finally, you can use hand tracking to navigate the Quest's home menus, game library, and the Quest store. If at any point you want to swap from hand tracking controls back to the Oculus Touch controllers, you simply Simply push the button under settings in the main menu. So here's my conclusion. The finger tracking on Oculus Quest works great and it's simply amazing that not only is the update free but that you don't need any additional hardware for this to work. On other VR headsets you would have needed to invest in additional hardware such as a leap motion device to add this functionality so to see this integrated so seamlessly into Quest is really incredible. The Quest's cameras do a good job of tracking your hands and individual finger movements, allowing for gestures such as the OK sign, thumbs up, flipping the bird, pinching to click and holding to scroll. And using your hands to navigate the menus feels really intuitive. However, when one hand moves in front of the other, occluding it from the tracking cameras on the Quest, your virtual However, when one hand moves in front of the other, occluding it from the tracking cameras on the Quest, your virtual hands will disappear, so there's definitely room for improvement. 
It would be great to see if the system is robust enough in the future to allow someone with a hearing impairment to use the hand tracking for sign language to communicate with others in social experiences. That would be really amazing. As of right now, there are only a few select first party apps that support hand tracking, such as the Oculus browser, Oculus TV, and the home menus. I really look forward to the release of Elixir, the potion and spell casting experience, which they showed off at Oculus Connect 6, and also Facebook Horizon, which I'd be surprised if it doesn't support hand tracking at launch. So overall, another solid update for the Oculus Quest, and I can't wait to see further improvements of the hand tracking technology in the future. Okay, so that's the hand tracking update for Oculus Quest available right now. Now, I think it's great that the Quest is getting these awesome updates and innovations, but it does seem like the Rift S is being left in the dark, which is a shame for those out there that have invested in the PC platform. Now, I wonder if this is due to the camera placement on the Rift S, meaning that hand tracking isn't possible on that device, or maybe they just don't see the value in adding it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But for Quest owners, I think this is a great free update and alongside Oculus Link, you're really getting good value for money when investing in an Oculus Quest. Now, sadly right now, there isn't really any games or content that fully takes advantage of this hand tracking update. However, developers will get access to the SDK next week, allowing them to integrate this technology into their own games and experiences. I'd love to see finger tracking in social applications such as VR chat and big screen in the future. I think that's where finger tracking and hand tracking is really going to shine. But let me know what you guys and girls think of this free hand tracking update in the comments down below. What games or experiences are you excited to see use this technology? Or maybe you're a Rift S owner and you're feeling a little bit left out right now. Either way, I'd love to know in the comments. Okay guys, so yep. As you know that the uh, previously before hand tracking is integrated into Oculus Quest, uh, we have this technology called Leap Motion, but we have to buy a separate tracker or uh, another device like additional device for getting this Leap Motion. However, it was like quite outdated now these days since the hand tracking already integrated into Oculus Quest and yep. However, I just want you to know that uh, we have this technology back then like 2015, 16, 17, it was still in the hype, which is called Leap Motion. So Leap motion in VR uh, will show your fingers, which is like um, like the hand gesture right now, but in like bone, for, bone form. So you can see the fingers clearly in the uh, in the bone, like your real fingers. So it's gonna be very precise the things that you do since. Um, it covers each of your finger, not like the hand gesture in Oculus Quest. <coughs> I'm sorry. So this is exactly what it's going to appear in virtual environment. However, since uh, VR doesn't really uh, a place for leap motion anymore these days, technology of VR starts to get advanced and advanced. So leap motion is kind of lame for VR. However, uh, they have come out, come out with another leap motion controller, which is not for VR. You can just use it for uh, desktop, laptop, PC. So this is going to be really useful if you need hand gesture without VR. So let's see it. Welcome to Crystal Maker 10. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the Leap Motion 3D controller to rotate and scale your source structure. The Leap Motion controller is a simple USB device that plugs into your Mac or PC and allows you to control your system using simple hand gestures. 
and we programmed Crystal Maker to work with this device. Now in this demonstration I'm going to assume that you have purchased your device and plugged it into your machine and followed the manufacturer's instructions to download and install their driver software. Once that's been completed then you can launch Crystal Maker and on launch Crystal Maker looks for the Leap Motion controller and if it's installed it will allow you to use your hand gestures to rotate and scale your structure. Now there are two different ways of manipulating your structure with the Leap Motion controller. You can use the two-handed method which many users will find more intuitive and more powerful or you can use a one-handed method which is used for rotation only but sometimes can be more convenient if you want to use your other hand for something. Now to use the two-handed gesture you need to position both of your hands above the controller with your palms facing downwards and your fingers splayed out and then you can rotate just by imagining that you have a ball between your hands, a solid ball, and you're turning that about different axes. You'll notice that the model rotates as well. You can also scale, imagine that you're squeezing your virtual ball or that you're pulling it apart. Again, squeezing it in, pulling it apart, squeezing, pulling, squeezing, pulling. The other set of gestures is the one-handed gesture. Position your hand above the device to rotate about a virtual axis coming from the table up to your hand. You can also rotate about an axis that comes out of the screen towards you. Positioning your hand in front of the screen, twisting. Or there's a third axis which is parallel to the screen parallel to the controller and just rotate, simple rotation. Finally, I want to say something about how you can stop the device from tracking your hand. Why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes if you position your hands above the device and then move them away, then your structure will move and you don't want that. Your structure will rotate because your hand motion triggers a response. So we programmed the device so that if you put your fingers together, it will cease tracking. C A will stop the you put tracking. your fingers apart and it'll track. Put your fingers together and it will stop tracking. So that's a good way to withdraw your hands without having your structure rotate or scale on you. Finally, remember you need to have your palms pointing downwards towards the device so that the camera can see what you're doing. And that's the Leap Motion 3D controller that works with Crystal Maker 10. All right, so that's how the Leap Motion work. Okay. So I hope you guys understand now the difference between lip motion and hand gesture. Okay. So beside uh, hand input devices, I told you already that we also have. Okay. So beside hand input devices, we also have non-hand input devices. Device uh, that input information and support interaction but not integrate with hand so it capture other parts of body beside hands such as head eye even our mind guys we have mind tracking currently in vr wow and face tracking also i mean face uh, as the input device and microphone and full body tracking 
So we're gonna see all of this one by one. So let's start with the head first. Okay, before we come out with the tracking, firstly let's understand this VR headset. So this is Oculus uh, VR headset. The inside of Oculus Rift S, you can see that there are many chips and sensors and cameras in the headset. And this is the brand name. So we're gonna break down the components of Oculus headset. So this is uh, Oculus VR headset. So if we break it down, it's gonna be like this. So the first is the lens, you can see it here. And second is the display and the third is the tracking technology. The display also come on like this. Okay. So here we go and see each of the component. So the first is the lenses. You can see that this um, shiny thing is the lens of the VR headset. So what does it do? It establishes a focal point that is critical to perceive depth. So depth is one of the things that uh, make our brain trick by VR, guys. So users' eyes stare beyond the display into virtual environment. That is the usage of the lens in VR headset. To see the detail, these are different kind of lenses in different kind of VR headset. This is lens in SCC5, lens in Oculus Rift, and this is lens in PSVR. Every headset has different lens, but let's see what is the main usage of the lens, guys. If your eyes focus on something far away, they focus on infinity. That means the rays of light are parallel and the lenses of your eyes are relaxed. If an object like this little fly moves closer to your eyes, and you want to keep it in focus, your lens bends and it breaks the light differently. To keep the fly in focus, all the light from a single point on the insect needs to be focused on a single point in the back of your eyes. If the fly comes too close, the lens cannot bend enough and you lose focus. This is why VR headsets need special lenses. So the angle of the light from the lenses is corrected so that it can be used by your eyes again. Because the light rays hit your lens at a different angle, you perceive the image as farther away than it really is. To make the headset lenses thinner and lighter, some VR headsets use Fresnel lenses, which are lenses with the same curvature as regular lenses, but they are segmented. But using Fresnel lenses means that you have to make compromises. You can create lenses with many segments, which results in a sharper image, however, you lose light that gets scattered at the peaks that do not have the right curvature. As an alternative, you can create Fresnel lenses that have fewer segments, which results in less scattered light and more contrast, but will also give you images that aren't as sharp. These are the basics for understanding how optics for VR headsets work. Subscribe to our newsletter at vrlenslab.com to stay up to date. Okay, so yep, so you guys know now how the VR lens work and what does the name of the lens in VR? So it's called Fresnel lens, guys. Most of the VR has used that lens. Remember Fresnel lens? However, uh, there is one new lens just came out. It's called RABS lens, refers as spherical backside, which over maximum VR field of view for the lenses while enhancing optical clarity. 
So this is the regular lens, the frontal lens. But if we use R R ABS, it's gonna be like this. So, yep. Uh, this is not used yet for the current headset. So I hope that there will be headset who use this, which use this air ABS lens. However, final lens is not bad. I mean, we all used to be it for the VR users. Okay, so after the lens, the next part is display. Ooh, why display is important, guys? Because it renders a stereoscopic image on the HMD guys okay and it has to be minimum frame rate of 60 frame rate per second to avoid lagging that might break the illusion or lead to nausea so with minimum frame rate 60 frame per second which is used by Google Cardboard we uh, we will not have any lagging while we use our VR headset so therefore we won't have any nausea for Oculus Rift and the CC5 uh, they have more sophisticated number which is minimum 90 frame rate per second or also it can be 120 frame rate per second so for sure there will be no lagging and less nausea okay so if you guys are wondering why the uh, display is important produce telescopic vr what is telescopic vr actually so it's you can say that for example there are two images one for each eye same with the way we view our real world guys and stereoscopic VR utilizes two lenses for each angle as opposed to one you can see previously we have two lenses in VR headset so these two lenses represent human eyes and they capture similar information the two lenses have slightly different angles just like human eyes okay so this is known as interpapillary distance or the distance between your papillae. So the lenses in VR headset is exactly similar with our eyes, okay? Even the distance is the same, which is called interpapillary distance. So how it can be a stereoscopic VR? Because by viewing the same scene from two different eye positions, the brain can calculate depth, guys. So uh, this telescopic VR creates the sense of 3D depth in virtual environment, whether the object is far or near. Okay, so using the VR camera to mimic human eye positions, it will create a stereoscopic VR, which is create the depth. So it's like uh, when we see uh, things with our eyes so when the 2d images are wrapped in close proximity of course we will believe that they are standing in a virtual world okay so that's how we are tricks our brain so this is the simulation is right eye and it's left eye you can see this is the left image and this is left eye and this is you can see the intersection between left image and right image which makes it look like in the 3d view and this is how to create stereoscopic 3d images and yep uh, this is the interpopulary distance between camera left and camera right or left lens and right lens and this is the picture so this is left eye right eye this is left projection and this is right projection that will become one which creates depth in virtual environment 
so yep this is more detail this is the retinal coverage the lens lens interpopulary papules left screen right screen and this is virtual left screen virtual right screen yep okay it cross each other but it creates one virtual environment and it makes us believe that we are in a virtual environment so actually there are two types of VR image or video which is monoscopic VR and stereoscopic VR so the one with the VR headset for sure it's a stereoscopic VR but monoscopic VR is the one that you shoot with your phone with panorama mode uh, with 360 images this is monoscopic VR okay but it's only one you don't have you don't need any headset for that but stereoscopic VR is this so it takes top and bottom picture okay so that's why it's called stereoscopic VR all right so after the lens and display we comes to the non hand input device or the tracking technology in the VR headset the first is head tracking okay so this is D X Y and Z it tracks our head okay so this is also available in Google Cardboard, 3DOF, and 6DOF. Okay, it's able to track the yaw, roll, and pitch. It uses three sensors, which are accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope. But besides head tracking, we also have eye tracking. Ooh. It can track our eyes, guys. This is so exciting. It came out uh, two years ago, which the name of the headset is HTC 5 Pro Eye. So it can track our eyes where it goes and it can show the picture based on where our eyes see. So let's see in detail how it looks like. Eye tracking and AI upsampling are going to revolutionize VR gaming. Here's why. Let's start with eye tracking. It's pretty self explanatory. With the use of some sensors in the headset, it's possible to track the movement of the eyes so they know exactly which part of the screen you're focusing on. This will help with presence in social applications like VR chat because your avatar's eyes will be moving naturally and other users will be able to see exactly what you're looking at. The main benefit of this for gaming, though, is with foveated rendering. Foveated rendering has already been used in some games, but it's fixed foveated rendering. This is when the center of the screen is full resolution, and towards the edges it bleeds out to a lower resolution. This is more common with the original Oculus Quest, and it is noticeable when you're looking for it, but it does help reduce the load on the GPU, as it isn't having to render the full resolution across the entire screen. With eye tracking, it's possible to have the foveated rendering move with your eyes. With the use of some software, they can pinpoint exactly which part of the screen you're focusing on with high accuracy, and have the screen at full resolution at this point, then bleed out the resolution for the rest of the screen. We've already seen a few companies demonstrate this tech. Toby make eye tracking products, and have their eye tracking built into the HTC 5 Pro Eye. From benchmark tests, they've seen a reduction of GPU shading of over 50%. Great! The GPU reduced, of percent Pico O'Neill Eye is a headset aimed at business users with built-in Toby eye tracking. They claim that dynamic foveated rendering increases frame rates by up to 66%. Wow, okay, so foveated rendering. The other thing so that I effective. want to talk about is AI upscaling. Okay, so as you know that uh, the main benefit of eye tracking is foveated rendering, where it renders a uh, full resolution uh, specifically in the picture that we see with our eyes but the la the others are with low resolution so it will uh, reduce the power of gpu and 
it will help the frame rate focus but how does it apply let's see in details with SCC 5 i Pro. The HTC Vive Pro i adds one feature to the Vive Pro, but it's a really important one, eye tracking. The Vive Pro i is HTC's latest Pro headset, and it is all about eye tracking. So this thing is built with businesses in mind, car manufacturers, uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, testing for fighter pilots presentations, giving speeches. The big thing about eye tracking is that it enables foveated rendering. So this is where developers can take exactly where your eye is looking and really pump up the resolution on that space and blur the rest of it. This is how our eyes actually work in real life, so you don't even notice it. When foveated rendering is on, it just looks like a better picture. The big benefit here is that foveated rendering eliminates processing power because it's not focused on making everything around where you're actually looking look pretty. You can spend more time focused on what you're actually seeing. Businesses can use eye tracking in a ton of different ways. One of the demos I did was Ovation, and this is a public speaking training program uh, that puts you in a room full of people and you give a speech. Each year we come together to give you our, let me speed it up, view of the VR landscape. Oh. Okay, as I'm reading, all the audience members are shifting uh -huh. and like moving their legs. This is crazy. Okay. I've said like 10 times, said like 10 times, 11. Ooh, they love me. Oh, wow. They're, they're clapping for me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I love, I love you too. The Vive Pro Eye tracks your eye as you're actually giving that speech to let you know where you're spending the most time looking, what you should be looking at more. At the end of your speech, there's a whole ton of data that pops up showing where you were looking and uh, giving you suggestions on how to make it better next time. It was really cool, actually. You get to listen to yourself and watch your avatar give the speech that you just gave, so you can really get a sense of how you looked as an audience member as well. Eye tracking can also be useful in things like car sales. In the demo, I was able to see the developer side of things, and the difference was stark. Foveated rendering improves upon the Vive Pro's rendering capabilities nine times. So images are nine times clearer exactly where the user is actually looking. This makes things look incredibly crisp. The BMW logo on the steering wheel, I mean, looked real. I saw it also in standard rendering with HTC Vive Pro, and it was pixelated. I could tell it was VR, not so with foveated. HTC has a solid foothold in the enterprise VR industry. They're the ones that are driving experiences that businesses use to train their employees or make their experiences better. But the Vive Pro Eye with the eye tracking really has a lot of cool possibilities for the gaming world as well. Uh, this is a piece of technology that could really make those experiences realistic and also open up some accessibility options. When you have eye tracking for a menu for example, you don't have to have a controller. You can just use your eyes to select things. You can use your eyes to actually play an entire game. So there's a lot of opportunities here opened up just with the addition of eye tracking. HTC is focusing on business solutions right now with the Pro Eye, but developers are getting on board and there should be some games coming soon. But for now, the consumer market has the Vive Cosmos. So this is a brand new headset that HTC revealed at CES alongside the Pro Eye, uh, but we know basically nothing about it. We got a look at it. There are two front-facing cameras, two cameras on the sides as well, uh, and it might use a smartphone in some way. It's definitely tethered to a PC or another processing source, um, but that's about all we know. There's going to be more information about that one coming soon. And Gadget is on the ground at CES 2019. Okay guys, so that's about the uh, STC 5 Pro I. But let's see how the foveated rendering looks like.
I'm gonna maybe uh, buy potentially in the future. Once you're actually in the car and you're up close and personal with the steering wheel, the speedometer, the radio, things like that, the foveated rendering really comes into clear picture. So they did a side-by-side -side comparison in real time while I was wearing the headset. So on the left it was standard and on the right it had foveated rendering enabled and it was a huge night and day difference. Uh, I could actually read the text I was seeing, I could clearly look at icons and the gear shift, I could read the speedometer, things like that. Whereas on the left in the standard version, it was all fuzzy, it kind of looked like I wasn't wearing my glasses. As for how well the eye tracking worked, well, it worked pretty seamlessly. You're not really supposed to think about it while you're doing it. You're just supposed to move your vision around. And usually there's some sort of visual input, like a laser pointer or a, kind of like a heat map telling you where you're looking. Uh, we have that in our demos here, and it seemed to work pretty flawlessly. And I can see how this could be a really huge feature for VR, not just VR games, but also like these business apps, other things like that, educational apps for sure. In terms of how the eye tracking actually functions, well, they put these rings inside of the goggles on the Vive Pro, so they're on the outer rim, and you can see them pretty clearly when you're putting the goggles on. You don't really feel them while you're wearing the headset. The comfort level is the same. It feels just like the old Vive Pro that came out last year here at CES. And it basically, it just tracks where your retinas are moving as you're looking through a scene using uh, little pulses of light. Uh, they also haven't said anything about pricing or availability. Alright, so yeah, that's about the SCZ5 Pro Eye. That's so cool. I really hope we can have it in our lab soon so you guys can experience how to um, experience things just using your eye control. So the next uh, tracking besides eye tracking is mind tracking guys. So now VR has come into like a really sophisticated uh, tracking which is it can track your mind which uh, it will give input to the VR application that you are playing with based on what your mind says. So you don't have to move your hand, you don't have to move your eyes, it's just with your mind. And that's exactly like Matrix film does. So I'm pretty sure in the next five years, we don't have to do anything. We can just simply say what, what's on our mind and we can do anything that we want. So this device is called NextMind. It is installed behind your VR headset. This is the device in up close. So this device uh, detects your neural input, which is your brain input. So we're gonna see what NextMind Mind Tracker can do. your headset though you can just wear it
turn off the lamp on the TV. Next mine. Okay, so that was next mine in VR and in reality. So we're gonna see how it applies in VR. Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike, and today I want to show you something that literally blew my mind. Now, if you follow the channel, you'll know that I love crazy VR recoil gun stocks, and I almost gave myself third degree burn. Literally takes the biscuit. It's by far the weirdest VR accessory I've ever tried. So let's get right into it, and without further ado, let's dive in. So over the years, controllers for VR headsets have evolved. We now have controllers with individual finger tracking, capacitive touch sensors, and the Quest has allowed us to use our hands alone to navigate the system's user interface with the recent hand tracking update. So what I'm gonna show you today isn't designed to replace those controllers, but instead add a new control method on top of what we currently use. And that new control method is mind control. It sounds crazy, right? But this is a real product called NextMind, which is a brain computer interface. It's currently available as a development kit and the team at NextMind kindly sent me one over for me to try out. It's a small and lightweight device at just 60 grams and can easily be clipped onto the back of a baseball cap or a head strap of a VR headset. It contains an internal rechargeable battery, which lasts up to eight hours and is charged via USB-C. The device features nine comb-shaped sensors which make contact with the back of your head and can read the signals from the visual cortex of your brain which are then sent to the PC via Bluetooth giving you the ability to control digital actions with your mind alone. It sounds completely crazy and that's because it is. So now I'm going to power this thing up and show you it in action as I have some flat screen and VR demos to try and then I'll talk a bit more about how it works and my conclusion on this technology. Okay, so as you can see, I've attached the next mind to the back of my baseball cap here. There is a strap included in the box, but this seemed a little bit more comfortable for me. And I've got all the software installed. So now I'm just gonna go through the setup and calibration process. So I've got the device turned on and Bluetooth is enabled on my machine. You can see that the next mind device is already connected and we've got a battery status here and also how well it's connected to the back of my head. And as you can see here, the green on these contacts means that it's got perfect contact to the back of my head. Now this could be that I've got a bald head essentially, you know, maybe it would cause more problems if you had more hair and you wasn't uh, follically challenged like me. But you know, it's the first time that I've ever been told that my mind is perfect, so I'm happy with that. So let's carry on, start the calibration, hold still and stay focused. I've got it, so I'm focusing on the uh, the lines there that seemed to work okay so let's stay focused on this yeah <laughs> okay so I got a perfect score that's pretty cool so it seems like my mind is completely primed for doing this sort of thing so this is the fun part you got these three circles in front of me and I can just choose which one I want to pick just by focusing on it so let's pick the far right one <laughs> and now the far left okay and now the far well. right again. And now the middle. <laughs> it's completely insane that it actually works. I, I, I don't really understand it, but let's carry on and try some more demos and see what we can do with the power of my mind. Okay, so this is controlling a TV. So let's uh, check out the news. Okay, this is without VR, guys. <laughs> so... I can pause it. Okay, he's trying to control. Or I can turn mind. the sound off. Oh wow! Okay, let's turn the sound back on. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> I feel like I have some kind of superpowers. It's nuts. Okay, so now we've got uh, a music composer here. So let's try and make some beautiful music with just the power of my mind. Nice. Get some more drums in there. Oh yeah, this is my jam. <laughs> Get some ambience. Nice. So this 
analysis applies in reality. Some sense in there. Starting with the low. No fear headset, guys. So this is some high in there. Insane. <laughs> this is so nuts. Wow. Okay, let's just re restart this. This is how you restart the whole thing. And then we're back. <laughs> this is completely blowing my mind right now. I can't believe how well this actually works. So let's try a couple more demos before we move on to the VR one. Okay, so this is a basic little platforming game. And what we can do is we can focus on those rocks to destroy them and move them out of the way of our little character and also okay. blow up enemies. <laughs> With my mind. <laughs> Ooh. Jedi powers. Yep, you oh, can be like oh. Jedi, guys. No, focus, Mike. Focus, 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 focus. Focus, focus. Focus, 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 focus. As long as you focus, you'll Whoa, that succeed. was crazy. That was crazy. Uh-oh, let's destroy this enemy first. I feel like Professor X. So now that we've had some fun with the PC, literally just using the power of my mind, and I'm using it to blow up these aliens. So it's time for ET to go home. So this is the fear, guys. I feel like Professor X. I feel like I have to do like a focus. Right, let's dodge the incoming fire. Focus. Oh, dodge it. Blow up his mind. <laughs> there we go. And we can teleport by focusing on the uh, teleportation marker over there. There we go. Wow. <laughs> I feel like I need to be in that wheelchair like Professor X rolling around, blowing up these aliens with my mind. Right, let's dodge the incoming fire. Jedi. Focus. <laughs> so I'm focusing on his on his feet. I'm looking around him. Nothing's happening. But then if I focus my mind on his brain and look at the pattern. Really focus on the pattern. <laughs> he explodes. Focus on the pattern. So guys. now I'm going to try and explain how this technology works in the most basic way I possibly can. And that starts with a mind blowing fact that I recently learned. And that is that you don't actually see with your eyes, you see with your brain. For example, this video that you're watching now, your eyes are just the middleman between the images of this video and the visual cortex of your brain. So when I'm wearing the next mind device and focusing on these objects in both the flat screen and VR experience, each of these objects has a unique signature pattern overlay, which is being read by the visual cortex of my brain. These signatures and signals in the visual cortex can be picked up and identified by the next mind device, which are then sent to the PC to process them and translate them into an action. The next mind is a non-invasive device which just reads the signal from your brain. It can't actually write to the brain and you can opt in and out of any data that you wish to share with the company. Tech like this seems like complete science fiction but it might not actually be as far into the future as you might think. Because next mind aren't the only ones that believe this technology could change the way we work and play forever. Brain computer interfaces have been a hot topic recently with Elon Musk going a few steps further by wanting to actually implant a chip into your brain which can both read and write called Neuralink. Gabe Newell from Valve is also excited about this tech and recently did an interview with the New Zealand News Network talking about the research and development they're doing with brain computer interfaces and how the sensors could be implemented into the head strap and facial interface of future VR headsets. I'll add a link to the whole interview with Gabe in the description down below. It's absolutely fascinating to watch and I'd urge you to check it out. But going back to Nextmind, even though this is just the beginning, I'm super impressed with it as it was very simple to set up and use and it made me feel like I had a superhuman ability. It's not perfect by any means and still has a long way to go. For example, right now it can only be used to read your brain signals to essentially turn a switch on or off and the response time is kind of slow. 
It doesn't give you that full Jedi powers feeling whereby you could move an object around the screen with your mind alone, but with developer work they could certainly create game experiences that replicate that feeling by using this device to activate scripted sequences in game. Just imagine a game that uses this technology in a way that mind control is part of the game's narrative and the character that you play has telekinesis powers and can collect ammo and supplies using your 